The NetIO server is basically a digital I.O. server model you can use with Proteus simulations. What it does is let you control and keep an eye on digital input and digital output pins, all in real time, through a simple HTTP API. Here's a quick look at what the NetIO server offers. A built-in HTTP server, it runs on port 8080. 8 digital input and 8 digital output pins. API endpoints for reading and writing to the pins. JSON responses, which just makes it easier to connect with other software. There's also an embedded HTML user interface that it serves up automatically, so you've got a visual way to interact with it right away. Cross-origin resource sharing is enabled, which means you won't hit typical browser security blocks if you're building a web app to talk to it. Let me walk you through the process of installing the NetIO server model in Proteus. Currently, there is no NetIO server model installed. Open your browser and search for Electronics Tree. Navigate to their Proteus library page. Scroll down to the bottom of the library page until you find the NetIO server model, which has been recently uploaded. Click on it to open the detailed guide post. At the bottom of the guide post, you'll see a download link. Click on it to begin downloading the zip file. Please extract the zip file using WinRAR. Do not use the default Windows extractor, as it may cause file corruption or errors because the file is password protected. The password is electronicstreet.com. After extracting, open the extracted folder and locate the library folder. Copy the file from the library folder and paste it into your Proteus library folder. Also, copy the model file and paste them into your Proteus Models folder. Now that the files are in place, restart Proteus. In the Device Selector window, search for NetIO Server. You should now see the NetIO model available for use. After installing the NetIO Server model, place the model onto the schematic editor and then start the simulation. Next, open your web browser and navigate to your computer's localhost address. In the address bar, you can use one of the following addresses. Localhost with port 8080. Or 127.0.0.1 with port 8080. If everything is working correctly, a default web page for the NetIO controller will appear. This confirms that the model is functioning properly. At this point, you can stop the simulation, connect the digital input and output pins wherever needed for your project, and then restart the simulation for further testing. I will now provide a working demonstration of the NetIO server via its web user interface.
If you want to control your NetIO controller simulation from your phone, tablet, or another computer on the same Wi-Fi or local network, here's how to set it up step by step. Let Windows allow connections on port 8080. By default, Windows blocks unknown ports. We need to let it know that port 8080 is safe to use for NetIO. Open the Start menu, search for Firewall with Advanced Security, and open it. On the left side, click Inbound Rules, then on the right side, click New Rule. Select Port and click Next. Choose TCP, and under Specific Local Ports, type 8080. On the next screen, select Allow the Connection, then hit Next again. Make sure all three profiles, Domain, Private, Public, are checked, then click Next. Give your rule a name like NetIO Server. Click Finish. Now your computer is allowed to accept incoming requests on port 8080. Next, you'll need to know your computer's IP address on your local network. Open the command prompt. Type IP config and press Enter. Scroll through the results and look for something like IPv4 address. That number, which will be different for your computer, is your local IP address. Copy it. Open a browser on your phone, tablet, or another PC. In the address bar, type the IP address you got earlier, followed by 8080. If everything's working, you'll see the NetIO server web interface. Now, let me show you how to access the NetIO server from a mobile device. Want to build a custom interface to control your project? You can. The NetIO server model allows you to serve your own HTML, CSS, and JavaScript files directly from the simulation with no extra software needed. This means you can design your own web-based control panel using HTML, CSS, and JS and have it appear when someone visits your device's IP address on the network. First, ensure you have saved your NetIO server Proteus project. 
Then, navigate to the project's location. As you can see, I have my project saved and its location open. Now, within that location, create a new folder named NetIO. Inside this NetIO folder, place your web files like this. If you prefer a single file setup, you can also just create an index.html file that includes all the CSS and JavaScript inline. That works too. Now, start the simulation and access the NetIO server using the same address we did earlier. You will then see your own customized new web interface for the NetIO server. When creating the web page, you use JavaScript to call the API endpoints. These API endpoints serve as a simple control for your digital inputs and outputs. They allow you to check the status of your inputs or switch your devices on off outputs, providing easy control over individual connections or everything at once. You can check the guide post on how to use the endpoints. Using AI is an easy way to create functional, customized web pages without needing deep coding skills. Just describe clearly what you want. For example, provide the NetIO server endpoints and get the code from the AI, then test it out. Thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, please show your support for more Proteus related content. Your encouragement helps me create more cool stuff like this.